Hey and welcome back to Laser Fun Part 2. How does it really work? Well, let me show you something very strange. This is an anodized aluminum thin card. It's only 0.2 millimeters thin. And all that's happened is the laser pointer has etched off the anodized or paint finish, revealing the card underneath, which is okay for making a business card. But what I wanted to do was etch into a block of aluminium. So I painted it with blue markup fluid and tried to etch my name in the back. There's absolutely no etching going on. But look at this. This is a stainless steel steak knife that Dorothy put this wacky, wonderful message on. Don't eat meat. And there is a proper etched, I can hear it. How come a 10 watt laser etching tool can actually dig into stainless steel, but doesn't touch aluminium? Oh, also it does burn wood really well. Here's a little block of wood, which I wanted to demonstrate to you. It's at a medium power setting, so it's about two millimeters down from the surface of the wood and blackened. I could have put it full power and it would have cut right through, but I just wanted to etch the surface of the wood. No problem. How does all of this work and why won't it cut aluminium? Good questions. So let's use the laser cutter to unlock some fascinating physics because it's really interesting how it works. So think back to your school days where we've all learned energy is neither created nor destroyed. On the surface, that sounds quite simple, but in fact, it's amazing. That means everything, all energy in the universe is already here, just tied up in a different form. Energy can never be made or destroyed. It just transmutes, changed its state from one thing to another. Think of an atomic bomb. All those atoms, all that energy inside basic elements can be released. That was what E equals MC square works. But I'm being a scientist. Let's talk about how your laser cutter actually uses physics to work. So to understand your laser cutter, you need to understand how light or photons are produced. Photons are energy which already exists that need to be thrown away. Photons are garbage. Photons or light is actually excess energy that atoms need to throw away to become stable. And that's how a laser works. Inside the laser head, the module is a diode an LED, effectively, that produces, in this case, ultraviolet photons. And how it works is that energy, electricity, is put into the diode. The semiconductor becomes unstable with that electricity. And that excess energy, the electrons on one half of the semiconductor, have to throw away the extra energy so they can return to a more stable state. And so they emit photons and you can choose what color of photons, which frequency of the EM's electromagnetic spectrum your semiconductor produces. In this case, it's blue, but you can make all different colors. Wiley at this point wants to help. Is that right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Wiles. <laughs> Those energetic photons that were thrown away are held in a little container with a mirror at either end and a tiny hole. Eventually, they bounce backwards and forwards and emerge as a culminated, I can't say the word, beam. It's called a laser beam of blue light. It's incredibly hot. And will cut you in half, as Goldfinger tried to do to James Bond. You are looking at an industrial laser which emits an extraordinary light. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Cool scene, but back to the craft of laser cutting. Why won't it cut aluminium, but it will darken stainless steel? 
Well, you have to understand what stainless steel is. It's an alloy, an alloy of different metals to make it stainless, rust-free, shiny. And one of the alloys inside stainless steel is chromium. And what the laser does is boil. And that's about changing state. It goes from a solid to a liquid and then eventually a gas or a plasma. It instantly vaporizes, turns into a gas, anything that it hits because it's hot. Chromium, actually part of stainless steel, vaporizes at a low temperature and goes black. That's what you're seeing. It's actually etched, it's removed some of the metal and the chromium inside stainless steel's alloy actually turns black, probably it becomes oxidized. Now, interestingly, a block of aluminium has an incredibly high boiling point, higher than stainless steel. And there's no way that a conventional amateur laser, a diode laser can melt aluminium. A high powered CO2 or fiber laser can, it can cut right through it, but these etching lasers can etch stainless steel and can boil off the surface of a business card by burning off the paint, but they're just not hot enough to actually affect a block of aluminium because of its physics. So by using a laser cutter, you're using the fundamental forces of nature. You're using energy to produce photons, which are thrown away. You're using those photons to change state from solid to liquid to gas to plasma, that state change is incredibly powerful in doing stuff. Encased in your Ortur Laser Master 3 is the fundamental building blocks of our universe. Well, actually, it's good fun because it can cut stuff, but understanding how it works, its limitations make life far more interesting because the truth is out there.